Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here, and welcome back to Sarelista. Today we're going to have um, another look at some paintings here. So we have another four paintings left to explore, another four different dimensions from this gallery to have a look at. And today we're going to start off with The Nostalgia of the Infinite, a painting by Giorgio de Chirico, which I explored in my video about um, Ico, the video game, Ico, and its relation to the artist Giorgio de Chirico. So if you haven't seen that already, uh, there's a link in the description and on screen now for you to have a look at that. And of course, also there's part one of Surrealista, uh, which you can also have a look at. And I recommend doing so before we start on this side of the gallery, because we had a look at some pretty interesting environments on the other side. Now this one, I'm quite pumped to see. The Nostalgia of the Infinite, 1911 to 13. Math was an essential tool for the metaphysics of Giorgio de Chirico. It made him believe that no one could work on their art without the proper knowledge of geometry. That is evident in his paintings when he uses unfinished polygonal forms, arcs, and symbolic stereometric forms like the brackets present in the mannequin's bodies. He believed these forms held symbols of a magical and superior reality like the keys for a true world. They are kind of strange, almost supernatural. I actually never thought of these as being sand dunes, actually, when seeing paintings. Ooh, I wonder if we can walk up them. Sidestep up a mountain! Hooray! I hope it's procedurally generated. Please let me be procedurally generated. Nope. Oh, no, they've got a barrier. Oh, no, 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 they haven't. Wait. So, wait. I can't go any further when I walk forward, but when I sidestep, I can. Okay, that's glitchy. Anyways, down to business. We are in this very deserted town in a desert. There's some more paintings for us to look at. Let's sidestep away. Because sidestepping somehow seems to be quicker in this uh, game than walking regularly. Here we go, into the first house slash plaza thing. Now, I'm guessing that the exit is going to be somewhere in that massive tower. But first, let's wait. We, can we, is there a way in? Ah, it's over there. Wow, we literally went all the way around this building and didn't even get in the entrance. Melancholy of a Beautiful Day, 1913. It doesn't look very beautiful. It's a bit cloudy. Actually, it looks a bit like... This, this is what the UK looks like without the statues. Just grey. Bleakness. Oh, we have some more... Supernatural... Heads. Two heads. 1918. Fairly simple. Still haven't found the disquieting muses. As far as I'm aware. Let's sidestep over here again. Okay, here we go. The vexations of the thinker. Hmm. You know, I think without the music, this level would probably be pretty good as well because of the wind. Oh, two more mannequins. Hector and Andromache, 1912. Okay, well, we need to find the checker to exit. And I believe it's going to be in this very threatening tower. There's not even there's not even a sprint button. Well, I suppose a sprint in this game actually would probably be a little bit... I um, don't think it would fit very well, actually, considering the pensive nature. And here we go. The famous view. The disquieting... No, not the disquieting muses. The melancholy of nostalgia. Or no, not... Well, actually, that could be a, that could be a real De Chirico title. It's hard to tell the difference. The nostalgia of the infinite. There we go. You know, it's a bit weird saying this, but... Approaching this tower is actually kind of scary. 
Oh, I guess that what Dakiru that's what Dakiruko was going for. Oh my, what, what the hell was that? What was that? Okay, that actually did give me a bit of a fright. Okay, so that, I think that's the door we go in. Gonna have to walk all the way around. Okay, sidestep. I'm not, I'm not gonna waste my time. Around we go. Wait, what? Oh no, I'm gonna have I I'm gonna have some difficulty finding this thing, I bet. So it is just a tower. So where is the checker box? Ugh oh, The speed of this walking makes me want to fall asleep. Which is the last thing I would want to do if I was looking at a painting like this. But they are very dreamlike. Well, other surrealist paintings, I think, are more so. Um, Rennie Magritte. More contemporary artists like Sami Charnin. Good surrealist artist uh, to look up. De Kiriko, they are kind of dreamlike, but I think they'd be the kind of spaces you would imagine yourself to be when you're very lonely. Scared and isolated. I mean, certainly these um, these paintings actually do bring back a couple um, feelings that I have felt in the past. Okay, so no, that's the door, and there's the checker box. Well, at least we saw the tower. Nothing around there. And then away we go. Take one last look at the tower. Uh, it's very foreboding. It's a shame we couldn't go inside it. Right, so here we are on our second um, painting, or more like um, four, five, six. Turin Spring. About the meanings of his art, he was extremely influenced by the philosophy of Schopenhauer, Nietzsche, e. Weininger. Oh, Nietzsche e. Weininger. I know Nietzsche. He was a nihilist. The reasoning of painting was the search for understanding beyond the allegorical, the Heraclean conflict between the physical and metaphysical aspects of the forms. Metaphysical. Okay, whoever painted this obviously was painted. Going into full artist mode here. Whoever wrote this obviously didn't speak English as their first language, maybe? Because there's a lot of spelling mistakes. From his reflections, the painter developed the concepts of plastic loneliness, the pure contemplation of the perfectly combined constructions and the loneliness of signs, eminently metaphysical and excluding all of of all logic possibility. Yep, that's surrealism for you. Logic possibility, goodbye. Oh no, I remember, yeah, I remember this painting. Actually, now that I've seen the slope, it's very similar. So we have an artichoke, I think. A book. An egg. A hand, oh. Wait, why is it cut off? Hmm, I wonder if, I wonder if the, oh, oh, a horse. Nope, no checkerboard here. I thought the hand would have been a pretty obvious uh, sign, but obviously not. Oh, paintings again. Let's go in. Oh, it's pretty easy. Philosopher and the Poet. Mystery and Melancholy of a Street. Portrait of Guillaume Apollinaire. <laughs> Sunglasses. I like that. She looks a bit like a statue. The Anguish of Departure. Hmm. Funnily enough, one of the paintings we're going to be looking at later is called The Melancholy of Departure, or Garimont and Pars. I think that does, it kind of invokes a sadness. In this one, I suppose, it is kind of two-way. I mean, when, when you leave somewhere, you have... The, the sadness and the melancholy of leaving, but also the anguish. You don't want to leave, you want to stay. 
happiness of returning. Yeah, they, they contrast each other quite nicely, actually. And the funny thing is that this painting is lighter and this one is much darker. And the one thing, I, the other thing I noticed with the, the trains is there's always one puff of smoke above the train. Never a constant stream, really. Just one puff. Well, the door must be nearby somewhere, if I heard it that loudly. We Off we go again to the races, sidestepping to win. Ah, here we go. Yes, that one is a melancholy of departure. This one is... Oh, again, recognizes painting. Can't quite remember the name. It's on the tip of my tongue. I know it. It's the one thing I always find difficult. Red. Oh, I, funnily enough, I was going to say Red Tower, but I wasn't quite sure if that was right. The metaphysical period, which I did talk about earlier, was approximately between 1900 and 1919. Yeah, like I said, he decided to continue with the classicism in the mold of the masters Raphael and Tiziano, of course like I said, more realistic style paintings, and the Surrealist, who considered De Kiriko to be a master of the movement, which I did say, declared him dead in 1918, and led an obstructionist campaign against his new productions. Like I said, they really didn't like his new work, they hated it. Because he went, he, I don't, I don't get it either. He went in a complete U-turn. André Breton, a famous critic at the time, defined him as a wasted genius. I would too. I think he could have kept going. Besides keeping a metaphysical touch in his works, the cause behind this tremendous change has never been explained. And never will be, probably. The Red Tower. I think it's a bit of a shame that he turned away from his original style. Actually, that Red Tower reminds me of Arabian Towers from my time living in the Middle East. Oh, a sketch. The Mathematicians. I can confirm that is a pretty good representation of maths. It's what you'll turn into if you overthink maths. Thank goodness that would never happen to me. The dream turns. He liked bananas a lot. Bananas in his in his work. Strange. What I really like is how there's been paintings hidden in all these other um, paintings as well. It's quite good. This is the melancholy of departure? You... That can't be right. Is it? No, it's not. The melancholy of departure. I don't think this is right. The other one, I'm pretty sure the other one is, is melancholy of departure. This one, I don't think is melancholy of departure. I'll look up the real name of that one after. Ah, the disquieting muses! We found it! We found the disquieting muses! I knew it was one of these ones with the heads. 1916 to 1918. Well, at least the title on this one is right. I know that one for sure. Disquieting muses. Ugh, oh, took long enough. Actually, you know what? I think it deserves a bit more screen time than that. We've been looking for it for ages. Yep, okay. Scary head, column. Yep. And kind of red architecture in the background. Yeah, that is definite. I could see how this one could be the melan melancholy of departure, but I think it's another one of his metaphysical interiors based on the the top part of the work. Another horse. Now we need to find that that grid. Now the door's all the way back there. Surely there must be something here. Oh, sidestepping again. God, he, he really... Uh, Giorgio de Chirico really used these kind of long perspectives to get a sense of foreboding. And this is just painted on, isn't it? Wait, I can't even get... I can't even get close to it. Oh, it's... They can't be serious. Is this a wall? Yes, it is. Okay. 
Well, it was pointless coming up this close then. Wow. Oh, and here is the grid. The checkerboard. Oh, the, the sun's kind of gone away in this one. It's much darker. I wonder if I can sidestep all the way into the door. See, look how much faster we're going. This is insane. Oh, God, we missed it just by a little bit. Uh, there we go. And now we're on to our last painting. Garimont and Pars, or the Melancholy of Departure. And actually, I, I quite like this painting. It was, probably, it was the first uh, De Kiriko painting I saw. And I also repurposed it later. I made it into a, a more kind of vapor-wavy art thing. Made a few edits, and it turned out pretty nice, actually. Um, put a little bit of text on the top saying, Was it worth it in the end? With a couple of effects. I think... Um, the work works uh, quite well in that kind of style. It's actually a de I made it into a desktop background. Um, actually, I'll probably shove a little image, a smaller version of it on the screen now to, for you to look at. But I think that I kind of turned the painting. I gave it a new meaning, a new lease, a lease of life. Ah, here we go. This, this one is the melancholy of departure. The love of Giorgio de Chirico for travels made him migrate, still very young, from his home in 1909. That is true, because a lot of people theorize that his love of um, classicism came from the time he lived in Greece. He felt like an Argonaut with the duty of knowing the world, to understand the mysterious... What? Myst oh, that's another spelling mistake. Mysterious style that would be later called metaphysical. He passed through Antennas, Fl Florentia, Turin, Ferrara... Paris, Paris, or Paris, and other cities, from where he developed his immense architectural and math inspiration to depict solitary patios and enigmatic figures, which he defined very well with an expression of himself. Tragedy of Serenity. Now, this one I find quite funny, because the original painting, Melancholy of Departure, portrays a really odd sloping perspective in the painting that kind of goes all the way up over there. Now, in this one, you can obviously see it goes straight up. But the funny thing to me is that the way he painted the painting, I always imagined that you can kind of see in the painting... I'll put a little comparison on screen now, in post-production. But you can see that the kind of... It looks a lot more slopey, like it would actually be on a slope. This, I, but of course, I think it's kind of another one of these um, surrealist tricks of the eyes. Because it was originally meant to be just a really long kind of perspective trick. And it was in fact straight ground and not slopey. These bananas have seen better days. Oh, that's not even a wall. Another scary tunnel in here. Okay, game, you've told us that like a 10,000 times. Geometric composition with factory landscape, 1917. And Amazon, 1913. Yeah, you can see this is more realistic style. Um, and... Giorgio de Chirico, I believe, died in 1978, so it wasn't too long ago that he passed away, actually, um, compared to the likes of Van Gogh. Uh, de Chirico actually lasted a long time, and he didn't kill himself, so that's always good. The Silent Statue. I'm not censoring this, by the way. It's art. Art needs to be expressed, not censored. There's no need for any censoring. I always find that a bit stupid. People censoring art for, oh, it's, it, it you know, it's inappropriate. Or no, it's not. It's art. It, it, it's meant to express something. If you censor it, you lose the meaning of the painting. There's no point in giving someone a censored piece of art because it's not the same. The train is back. Oh. 
Oh god. Bit creepy. Wait, what's this? I don't like how it's ticking. That makes me feel like something's gonna happen. Unless we hurry- unless we don't hurry up. Or unless we do hurry up, in fact. It could have made these wave. I think that probably would have been a bit nicer. To have the flags wave. Now, where is the checker? Ah, here we go. It's a shame you can't jump. I would have just jumped back down. Yeah, well, I think, uh... I think that the designers for this game took a little bit of artistic liberty when designing the upper portion. Because I don't think you, you can't actually see the upper portion of the painting. But this, this bit back here is uh, cut off. Nice clip art of a train there. And off it goes. I can't tell whether that's thunder or the tr or the train. It's a bit hard to tell. Yeah, and this of course this part of the painting is not really visible either, but uh whatever. Let's head back. And that is everything. We've done the Plaza Italiana, the Enigma of the Hour, the, oh, I can't remember that one, the Song of Love, the Nostalgia of the Infinite, I can't remember that one either, the Red Tower, and of course, the melan no, Melancholy of Departure, or Garimont and Parse. And that appears to be it. So... That looks like it's um, it for this gallery, but um, next time we can have a look at some more games. Um, I might play the Museum of Simulation Technology demo, even though that's already been out for a long time and it hasn't been updated. Um, but until next time, I'm Kaihatsu. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough of Serilista, um, a not very well-known game about Giorgio de Chirico. I'll see you next time. <laughs>